Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video. Recently, we've run out quite a few videos on the topic of the best camera apps on both iOS and on Android. I'll put some links up in the cards now if you've missed them, but probably the most popular manual camera app or aftermarket camera app on both Android and iOS is Filmic Pro. So in this video, we're gonna take you through step-by-step step how you can set up Filmic Pro for the best results for your videos. Now, Filmic Pro was one of the first apps to give you manual controls or controls over your phone camera that mimic what you would find on your DSLR or on your video camera. So this led then to people using Filmic Pro and their iPhones to create documentaries and create indie films and even use them in some feature films as well. So it was really a game changer when it came to filming and creating videos with your smartphones. So in this video, we're gonna take you through step-by-step step how you can set up Filmic Pro for the best results with video. All right, so here we are in Filmic Pro. The first thing we're gonna do is to configure all our settings. So we'll start by selecting settings. And we'll go up to resolution and we're gonna max out our resolution first. So depending on the phone that you've got and the quality that you're able to record in, which is based off the built-in camera. You can choose here 4K. For us, we're on a Google Pixel XL. We can choose 2K, 1080p, or 720. So I'd suggest that you max this out now to get the best quality. Record using the best quality settings you have available. Below that, we've got the bit rate, which is the quality of the video, which is measured in megabits per second. So the higher the number, the higher the quality, but the larger the file size. So we can see here that 100 is the highest option that we've got available on Filmic Pro on this device. We can drop it to 75 to 50. Personally, I'd suggest not to set this below 50. For best results here, you wanna be setting at at least 50, but if you've got the option, go to 75 or 100. But it will take up more storage space on your phone, so you may need to delete any photos or videos or clean up some of the storage on your phone. Now, if we scroll down below that, I'd suggest that you leave your video codec to auto and your keyframing to the default of two seconds there as well. And next, we'll look at the frame rate. So depending on the region that you're filming in, if you're in Australia or the UK, you wanna be using 25 frames per second. If you're in the US, then you wanna be using 30 frames per second. So we'll pick 25 here now. And you can see here, you also get the choice of higher frame rates. We've got 48, 50, 60, 120 and 240. And again, depending on the phone and even the resolution that we've set previously, you'll have access to different frame rates. But those higher frame rates are essentially your slow motion frame rate. So if you're looking to do slow motion, then you wanna pick one of the higher frame rates. So we'll scroll down now, and next up is audio. So we've got the choice here of 48,000 hertz or 41,000 hertz. Unless you specifically need to pick one or the other, then I'd suggest to leave it on the default, which was 48,000. Next up is your microphone, which microphone you're gonna be using. Default will just let the phone pick, whether you're using an external microphone or the camera microphone. But as we cycle through these now, you can see camera mic or default. It's because I don't have an external mic plugged in. So default will be fine in this case, but if you are going to be using an external microphone and you plug one in, then I would suggest you come in here and set this to external microphone. So there's no chance of you recording the wrong audio. So if we move on down from here now, you can see that if you don't want audio recorded at all, then you can turn it so it's video only. So we'll turn that off, we will want audio. And you can also enable headphone monitoring. So if you're going to use a plugged in headset just to monitor the audio, then you can turn that on there as well. Now there's heaps and heaps of settings in here that you can really tailor up and personalize this camera app to work for you. If we just take a quick look here in device, then you've got things like your storage location that you can change, you can change your file names, you can give your project a name, you can even name your scenes, your takes, you can lock the orientation of the camera so it's not gonna rotate as you rotate your phone. So there's lots of settings in here that I'd suggest that you come in and have a play around with to really tailor it up for you and for, for what you're after with your shooting. But for this video, we're just running through the essentials. All right, so those are all the critical settings for now. So we'll press the settings button here to hide that. Next up, we're going to look at the actual shot. So we'll start off here by clicking this arrow in the top corner. 
and it will give us an additional menu there. And you'll want to then select whether you're using the front facing or the rear facing camera using the button here. If your phone supports it, you can also turn on or off image stabilization using this button here. And you can also adjust the volume. You can see that we've got some audio coming through down the bottom here. We can also adjust the volume levels up or down by clicking on the volume here. And then it's just a matter of adjusting the sliders here up and down. And you can see that changing down the bottom as I make those changes. So as I boost this up here, you can see that the volume is now getting much louder. So that's where you adjust your volume. I'll bring that back down now. And I'll tap on the screen to get out of that. So now in regards to our actual shot, we've got these three primary buttons at the bottom here, which are gonna give us all the control we need. So we'll start off with the first one here, which is our shutter or our exposure. So we'll press and hold on that button, and then it'll bring up our manual settings for our exposure. So you can see here straight out, we've got the option of ISO. And if we press the other one here, then this will give us our shutter speed. So if we pick up the shutter speed adjustment here and we move it around, you can see that as we adjust the shutter speed, the shot gets brighter and darker. So where I'd suggest you start with this is if you're in Australia or the UK, that you set this to one over 50. If you're in the US, then to set it to one over 60. So that's when you're matching your shutter speed to the lights that you're using in your scene. So that way you are really reducing any chances of having any flickering or stuttering in your videos. So if you're in Australia, one over 50. If you're in the US, one over 60. Now you can also set your camera to a multiple of this as well. So again, depending on your region, if you're in Australia, you could double the number. So we could go one over 100 to darken the shot down a little bit. And don't worry about the focus adjustment there. We haven't done focus yet. You can see the shot's a little bit darker here. And likewise in the States, you could double 60 and use one over 120. But for the purposes of this, we'll lock our shot here into one over 150. And it is a really fiddly adjustment here. All right, so once we've locked down our shutter speed, it's time to adjust the brightness and the darkness of the shot using the ISO. So we'll press on that one there. And again, we've got ISO down the bottom here. So if we lower that down, the lowest we can go in this camera app is 50. So you can see that's darkened our shot. If we wanna brighten our shot now, we can increase this. So the higher the number, the brighter the shot. So you can see we can get some crazy brightness levels there. So where I'd suggest is the lowest point where the shot looks good. And this is really gonna depend on your scene and what it is that you're actually filming. So if for example, you're filming outdoors, so you're not using any additional lights that might be flickering and your shot is really bright, then I would suggest that you come down here and lower your ISO right down to the lowest point, which is 50 in this case. Come over to your shutter speed. Then you can increase your shutter speed above the 100 or even the 120 in order to darken your shot. So really you can go as high as you want here as long as you're not using any lights that are plugged into power that may give you flickering in your videos. So again, we'll bring this back down to 50 here because we are indoors. Come back over to ISO and we'll brighten that back up now for this shot. So that's all you need to do to lock down your exposure or the brightness of the shot. And you can see that we've actually locked it down here that it's not gonna change because it's highlighted in red. Next up, we're going to lock down the focus. So what we can do here is to pick up this little box and we can choose where we want the focus point to be and our phone will adjust the focus to make sure that whatever we've selected in that box is in focus. So if we pick up the box and drop it on my hand here, then you can see that the focus is locked down on my hand. And if we wanna lock our focus at that point, then we just touch again on the square and it goes red to lock that off at that point. Now the same as the exposure setting, if we long press on this button down the bottom here, then we can manually adjust, and I'll bring my hand back in now, the focus point by using the slider again. So you can see that as we adjust the slider here, we're able to adjust the focus of our shot. And when we let go, our focus will be locked in that position. And touch on the screen to get back. So we've locked down our exposure and our focus. The last thing we need to do here is to lock down our white balance which is done with the third button in the corner here. So if we long press on that, we're given two options here once again, down the bottom. With the first one is our actual color temperature. So you can see that as we pick up the little icon here and we slide it down, we're changing the color. So we're getting more blue at this end of the scale. And as we go up, we're adding more yellow or orange and creating a warmer look. But here it's about moving this around until you either match the color temperature of the lights 
in your scene or until your shot looks the way that you want it. Your other option for adjusting the color in your shot is down the bottom here, which is the tint. So again, as we pick this up and slide it up, we're adding more pink in our shot and then back the other way, we'll be adding more green. So you can refine the look of your shot to get it how you'd like it in camera or in your video file before you actually get to the point of color grading in your editing software. And once again, when you're happy with it, just tap on the screen to get back and you can see that we've now locked in our color temperature, we've locked in our focus and we've got our exposure all locked down because they're all red. Now remember that these settings are the same whether you're on iOS or on Android. And before you actually press record to record your videos, I'd suggest that you record a quick 15 to 20 second clip as a test to make sure that the audio is right, to make sure that your shot actually looks the way that you want it once you're actually recording. And then it's just a matter of pressing this big record button and you're away. So that's how you can set up Filmic Pro to get the best results with your videos. If you found this video helpful, then make sure you click that big subscribe button if you haven't already, and check out the links on screen now to the complete guide to filming with your iPhone or your Android smartphone. We'll talk to you soon.